This morning, thank you so much for being here. Luke, kicking it off with you this morning. What's your take on this firmer tone for markets? Earnings season winding down. Do you see the backdrop for investing uh, improving? We've got some big names reporting, by the way. Cisco, Coca-Cola, Disney, General Motors, Pepsi, and Twitter. We probably will see that give us a big uh, window into the uh, economic backdrop. These are the companies reporting this week, Luke. Your expectations. I expect earnings to continue to be above expectations. The bar was set low over the past few quarters, and we're starting to see visibility into the sectors and stocks that have truly weathered the storm. Earnings so far have been crushing it in the tech and healthcare space, and that's where I would stay overweight. You know, there's a reason that stocks, you know, Amazon, um, Apple, Google, Facebook, Microsoft make up over 20% of the S&P 500. It's because these stocks just kill it in any environment. There's also a reason that Amazon replaced Jeff Bezos with their cloud services CEO. It's because technology and cloud is growing full force, and technology is a place you have to be for the future. And healthcare, stick with names that were helping fix epidemics before COVID. Stocks like Tandem Diabetes, Exact Sciences, and Stryker. Cancer, diabetes, and orthopedics aren't going away, and there's a pent-up demand for these procedures and issues in 2021. If you're looking to add alpha, though, you know, in 2021, well, well stick with a small cap space. Small cap stocks have certainly been one of those areas that you might find better value given these run-ups in some of the larger names. But what about the uh, stimulus coming, Luke? That's going to be even more stimulus hit, thrown at this economy. We're talking about $5 trillion in stimulus just in the last year. What does that do to an economic backdrop in the markets, in your view? Well, it's definitely been propping up equities over the past nine months, and I'm glad they're looking at tightening the eligibility to deploy the stimulus. But the problem is, I don't think they're looking in the right areas are going to deploy that capital in the right areas. The best thing Democrats can do right now is open the country fully back up. Everything that's being proposed, more stimulus, higher minimum wage, and raising taxes to pay for it all is not good. Most of the time, any government intervention is always a bad idea. Stimulus looks nice in the short term until we have to pay for it. The sad part is, the middle class is usually the one that always gets burned and pays higher taxes. The biggest thing we need to protect is the goose that lays the golden eggs. That is small business. If any kind of stimulus needs to be given out, it's to small business owners to make sure that we can save as many as we can. Small business made up over 50 percent of the private sector unemployment before the pandemic. I sadly don't think that's going to be the case anymore. We need to let the free markets work efficiently and properly. And when parts of the economy is still shut down, it can't function properly. Yeah, well, that's true. The sh shutdown is going to cause problems for growth, that's for sure. Brian Brenberg, jump in. Hey, Luke, we've got a fascinating debate among Democrats between those like Janet Yellen, who are saying we've got to have one point nine trillion dollars. And Larry Summers, on the other hand, who's saying, wait a second, that could spark inflation. Where do you come down on that, Luke? Are we in for inflation if we get another big stimulus package like this one? Yeah, absolutely. Inflation's definitely a worry and something that I'm concerned about for the long term. I mean, we got all the stimulus um, coming out. We've also got interest rates remaining 0%. We're still seeing a lot of issues in the economy, especially in this environment where money is essentially free to borrow. The housing market's strong. Everyone's borrowing 30 year or borrowing money at 30 year mortgages at 2.6%. I mean, and, and everyone's got more money in their pocket from all the stimulus. You know, I think inflation's definitely going to be running hot. And I'm not talking 2 or 3%. I'm talking maybe 4, 5, or 6%, maybe 10 years from now, which is definitely a concern for those growth sectors. But I don't think that's a concern in the short term. But I think in the long term, with all this money supply, it's something you have to account for in your portfolio, absolutely. Well, look, we, uh, yesterday I spoke with Senator Ron Johnson, who walked us through President Biden's agenda. And he said, look, first was the spending part of it. We saw that with the $1.9 trillion, which is likely going to uh, become law. And now, after that, it will be revenue raising, which means tax increases. Luke, does that change your outlook at all, given the fact that we know that it is going to become more expensive for corporations, more expenses for individuals? You just said it. It's likely not going to be the top. 10 percent. It's the middle class where the money is. So we're going to see tightening of belts likely because taxes are going up. Does that slow things down? It does slow things down, but not right now. It slows things down, like I said, maybe three to five years out. Once these tax you know, increases for corporations and personal income taxes actually increase, that's definitely going to have an impact on the markets. But I think for right now, the stimulus is so much and being pumped so much into the economy and the money supply that I think that's going to offset these tax increases in the short term. But again, nothing is free, and we're going to pay for all this down the road. So uh, again, you have to account for all of this in your portfolio, which is hard. You do have to tune out the noise and take a longer-term perspective, because I, I don't think a lot of people are taking that long-term perspective right now. I think a lot of people just are just having that short-term perspective, and that's not how you can be in the markets. 
All right, Luke, we'll keep watching. Thanks so much. Great to get your insights this Thanks morning. Luke Lloyd joining us from Strategic. We are just getting started this morning.